Hey guys, Billy here with True Earthers. Thanks for tuning in again. Uh, I noticed something last night, and I know this movie's been done to death as far as Easter egg hunting goes. This movie is loaded with clues from Stanley Kubrick. I gotta do a quick recap, though, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about here. Um, it's pretty well known that, that Stanley Kubrick was approached by the U.S. government after he had filmed 2001 A Space Odyssey. Uh, because they were filming moon landing stuff in the event that something went wrong, we could still make Russia believe that we were ahead of them and on the moon. So Kubrick, they, they couldn't pull it off themselves. They just couldn't do it. They needed Kubrick. He's not his art, right? His filmmaking to pull this off. So that's what they ended up doing. Only Kubrick realized that they used all his footage and really figured out that we didn't go to the moon. Of course, they they kept him quiet. I mean, not only is he a Freemason like they are, but he was handed the keys to Hollywood for the rest of his career. I mean, this guy, Kubrick, right? But his guilt got to him. This is what the story goes. In all his movies, there's a lot of clues to about Apollo missions and the moon landing. And it keeps reoccurring, especially The Shining. It, it shows up all over this movie. One of the things well known is the sweater he's wearing. It's got the Apollo 11 mission on it with the rocket launching. This right here is an exact replica of the launching pad that they launched from. And it even has this driveway that comes up shaped like this, the rocket, which is on his sweater. Everybody knows that stuff, guys. They're called Easter eggs. It's things they put in movies right before our eyes that we don't know about. Some say it generates power amongst this cabal that they're all in. Some say this was his guilt. I mean, he, he was involved in faking the moon landings. And in all his movies, he puts clues like that. This movie's laced with them, but I found one last night that I haven't seen yet that's pretty interesting. This is the scene right before the twins show up. And I just happened to catch, I turned it on last night and I, I saw this and I said, oh, let me watch it. I've seen it a bunch of times. The scene with the sweater with the Apollo taken off. But I, something caught my eye was this Corvette right here. It's a... Uh, it made me think that I know Corvettes as a, as a promotion. General Motors gave every astronaut that went to space a brand new Corvette every year. It was the astronaut's car. Everyone bought Corvettes. That was that was into space, right? There's a Corvette there, so I paused it. I wanted to check it out, right? I'm like, hey, old Matchbox cars, right? And I noticed something funny. There's there's a cement truck. Now, you know, this isn't just a bunch of toys they poured out and let this kid go wild. This is all very, very scripted, probably by, by Kubrick himself. I mean, this kid's got to be making the right noises, and we've got this set up now. We didn't just tell him, go play with some trucks. We're going to film you. That's not how it works. Kubrick's got a Corvette here for the astronauts. I'm looking at this, and I'm going, hmm, a cement truck? Then it hits me. This is to symbolize that he's on that landing pad. The concrete pad. This right here, whoop, this right here, the space race. This ends up being what I'm going to show you in a moment is he reenacts with these cars the exact moon mission. This takes off, this hitches up to this, they both take off, they do a weird little maneuver, unhook, land here, they get in this car, which ends up being the lunar rover. Now, this is the module. This stays behind. The workhorse takes off. That's the orbiter. This, the, mo the rover, they come down here and park right behind. What's this? A matchbox Winnebago, like where you, what you take to a movie set. They park behind that. What's that? A catering truck. Also something at a movie set. They get, park this thing, they do their thing, they go back here, get in, this thing comes back and lands. And what, what I notice is the twins roll a ball, and it literally hits these two. If you play it in reverse, like I did to rewind, I, figure, I realize backwards, it's them leaving the earth. He does his thing, they come back, and the, then the ball comes back, they come back to earth. Watch this.
In reverse, in rewind, it's the lunar mission. My rewind is terrible on this TV. I'm not going to be able to do it for you. You'll have to go do it yourselves. Okay? That's the landing pad. He's got the rocket. I don't know if they'll show it on this. I don't want to play too much, but he's got the Apollo 11 rocket. On this pad that's identical to the pad that they launched that thing from. Okay, I almost forgot one that got me. This one up here in the corner. I was like, hey truck. It's like a hey truck. And I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. And then I, I remembered I seen a truck like that on Back to the Future. It's the manure truck. It, they, they haul manure. The truck that dumps into Biff's car. It's one of those trucks, a manure truck. Hey, what's another name for manure? Bullshit. You got it. The whole bullshit wagon towing the whole number. This was him reenacting the lunar mission that he that he helped. He's trying to relieve his guilt. They do this. They're called Easter eggs. All right, you guys. Hey, thanks for listening. You guys knew it. This look into this. Try to wake up. Look at all these Kubrick movies. It doesn't matter what it's about. He's got all kinds of Apollo stuff mixed in. All right. Thanks for listening.